Okay, so we are back. Let's um, go ahead and start working on the run method. Um, the first thing I'm going to need as an aside is um, a transfer function, because in order to run the network, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and put functions here because we're going to add more later. Uh, but for the time being, we just need one just to have something. So let's go ahead and define. Um, let's just do the sigmoid, I guess. Self x and then we'll do um, derivative equals false I can't spell false and just like that okay so if derivative so let's do if not derivative then I just want the regular function, so that's uh, return 1 over 1 plus np dot exp of negative x. All right, so that is the numpy exponential, which we'll need. Else, um, return the derivative. So this, the derivative of the sigmoid is output times 1 minus output, so let's make a quick variable here is going to equal self dot sigmoid of x uh, and then we'll just return out times 1 minus out just like that so that ought to work okay um, so now let's go ahead and do the run method Okay, define run, and you have to pass in some input for this to work out. And this will be, oops, run the network based on the input data. All right, so first of all, let's talk about something. Um, when I'm passing data into the network, it's important that it's convenient. Basically, I just want it to be handy for me to do. Um, however, when I'm actually doing the running of the network, I need to have input data aligned in a column, and in, I'm going to then do the matrix product with the weight matrix to move those through the layers, uh, which means that I need to have it lined up in a column. Now, NumPy arrays, as you should know, really are convenient just to be rows like a single numpy array is going to be essentially like a single row so what i want to do is i want to be able to just say um you know let's see i have a network with three inputs and the net inputs are negative one five and six something like that i want to be able to just write that out as a row and then let the run method take it and convert that into not only something that has two dimensions, but to transpose it into a column vector, okay? So we're just gonna assume that that is the format of the input. It's going to be um, a bunch of rows where each row is itself one of the sets of input data, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Also, we're gonna assume that this has two dimensions. So really, if I wanted to pass in a single example to a network with three inputs, and I want to pass in this example, it would look something like this. All right? Except it would be a NumPy array. And I'm going to do this because I need to be able to add more, um, more different cases to all run in parallel. And you'll see what I mean. OK. So let me just save off one of the dimensions here. So it's going to be input.shape, the zeroth entry. So this is going to be the number of rows. Um, of input data and input, and that's going to be the number of training cases. I'm sorry, I keep saying training cases because that's where this is going to go. This is just the number of input cases. Okay, so let's first clear out the previous um, intermediate value arrays. Well, lists really. So self dot under layer input is an empty list self dot under layer output is an empty list. Okay, 
Now let's uh, run it. Nope, not even close. Okay, now once again, I need to consider a couple of cases. Um, if it's the input layer, I need to pull the data from input. If it's a hidden layer, I need to pull the data from the previous layer. Okay, so let's handle both of those cases independently. So for index in range of self.layer count, right? So I'm gonna go through each layer and pull data from the previous layer. So if index equals zero, then I need to pull from input. So I'm gonna say layer input is gonna equal self.weights. Um, now I'm just gonna write all this out and then we'll talk about it. Weights of zero. So the first set of weights, right? Because this is the, I'm sorry, this is getting covered up. Weights is the list of weights we're looking at the first layer. So I want the first element of the weights list. So that is the matrix of weights. And I wanna do dot. So that's matrix multiplication with um, the input. So it's going to be, uh, well, okay. <laughs> Let me just write it out and then we'll talk about it. NP.vStack of the list input.transpose with NP.1s on one through LN cases. Just like that. Close it, close it, close it, close it. All right. So, what is all of this crap? Um, this is the matrix of weights, right? It's the first element. Uh, in our weights list multiplied by, I need to create a new matrix out of these two. Now the input is gonna be a list that looks like this and you'll notice I transpose it because it's gonna come in in this format but I need these turned into column vectors. And once I have all of these as column vectors, I need to append a list of fake inputs uh, for all the bias terms. So this creates a list of the appropriate size, right? It has one row and LN cases many um, columns for each of these cases, each of the different cases. Um, so we'll get a big stack of inputs and then a bunch of ones across the bottom. And all those ones are the fake inputs from the bias nodes. So that's why I got to stack them like this. Um, and so then essentially, this is our actual input uh, from the quote input layer, right? Plus the biases. And it's just that matrix multiplied by the weights. So that is gonna be the input to the current layer. Okay, otherwise, um, if that's not the case, then I need to do the same thing. Self.weights of index dotted with, again, I need to do a V stack and P dot V stack on um, self dot under layer output from which one from the oh this is a clever little trick so we're just going to put in a negative one here and then np dot ones of one and ln cases like that so what did i do here so this, all this does is um, determine layer input, okay? So what did I do here? Um, remember that I cleared out layer output completely. Um, what I need to do is take the output of the layer right before this one, and then do the same thing by appending all the ones for the bias nodes, um, making that into a V stack and multiplying it by the weights for this matrix. Now, using this negative one here, means that just take the very last element in the list layer output. And right now it doesn't look like that's gonna work <laughs> because I don't have code in place. But what we do is every time as we go through each layer, we save off layer output by appending it into this list, which means that the last one that was appended was the output of the previous layer. So this is just a slick way to refer to that, okay? So now that I know what the layer input is, Let's, um, well, first of all, let's do exactly what I was just saying. Let's, uh, let's save off the layer input. So dot append. Now we're gonna use this stuff later for training. So we'll save off the layer input and 
self dot layer output. Sorry, that's under layer output dot append self dot sigmoid of layer input. All right. So we'll have a big, either a column vector or a big matrix of layer input. We apply the transfer function to all of it. And that is the layer output. All right. So that's it. So that runs, this for loop runs everything through the network. And I just save off all of the inputs and outputs to each layer as we go through it. Once I'm done, I simply need to return the output from the last layer. So outside of the for loop, let's just say return self dot under layer output, uh, the very last one, and I'm going to retranspose it. Okay, so remember I took this input, let me go ahead and save that. I took the input, I transpose it, so input is given where each row is the set of data that goes in. This is gonna get transposed into columns so I can do the matrix multiplication. Um, and that's what gets saved off. And then when I'm finally done, I return the very last either column or matrix of outputs, uh, but I return its transpose, which means that for each row of input data that you give it, you'll get a row of output data. So it'll have the same format coming out as goes in. It's just not how it's handled on the inside. So let's try and add some uh, functionality here. I'll go ahead and pause this and, and add it in because this video is getting a little long and then we'll run it and it should work. Okay, so what I've done here is I have created LV input. So this is our little vector of inputs and it's just a NumPy array. So the first set of inputs is zero, zero. The next set of inputs is one, one. And in fact, we could add um, another one that is, let's say just negative one, one half or something like that. Um, and then output is gonna be, I just call this function right on backpropagation network dot run. I give it the input and then I print out the input and the output formatted. So let's go ahead, save that and run it. And there it is. Okay, so it's a 221 network. These are the weights that it's using. This is the input array. So this is the first set. So 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1 half. And the corresponding outputs are this column right here. So notice there were, it's a 221 network. So there's two inputs. So each row of data here is the input two of those and the output right there. Notice they're all close to a half because this, these are all uh, very small weights, uh, which means that the total input is, you know, not that far off is zero, which means the sigmoid basically puts out a half. Uh, but there's a single column, right? Now, if I do something simple, like make this two, two, two or something, I should see something more like this. And I can't scroll it but I think I can drag this up. So I should see something like this, right? Here's two inputs and now I have two outputs. So this looks, uh, looks appropriate. Okay, so that is the run method. Uh, it'll get fancier later when we have different transfer functions, right? This will just be pulled from essentially a list. We'll just have a list of functions. You can just tell it which ones to use. Uh, and so it'll, it'll change slightly, but for now we're just gonna go ahead and use um, the sigmoid will get it set up and we'll add that junk in later. Okay, so um, that's the run method. <laughs> we will do the train epic method next, probably broken into a couple different videos. And I think that is it. So I will see you guys soon. Later.